Okay, so we're gonna look at another example of the confidence interval of a mean. Um, problem says, here's a sample of the annual salaries of high school counselors in the United States. And it lists, let's count how many salaries there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven salaries. It says, assume the distribution of all such salaries is approximately normal. And it asks us to construct and interpret a 90% confidence interval of the mean annual salary for all high school counselors in the United States. So this is different. Um, here we're given a data set. Um, and we have a couple of different options for solving this problem. Um, so I'll do it two different ways. The first way I'll do it is we'll take our data set, plug it into Excel, and use Excel to find the values for the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. And then having found those values, we can go back and find the error, the margin of error, just like we did in example two, where we use the confidence.t to find the margin of error, and that'll allow us to find our confidence interval. Um, and then the second method we'll use is, um, we'll just use what the data analysis, the descriptive statistics in data analysis tool pack, um, and that will allow us to find uh, the sample mean and the sample standard deviation along with the margin of error. So we can do all of that in one step if we want, given the raw data like this. Okay, so first we'll look at our data up here and I'll plug this into Excel um, to find the sample mean, which we'll use the function average for, and the sample standard deviation, which we'll use stdev.s. So jump over here to Excel. I've already plugged the data values in, and I'll just come down here and I'll say equals average, and then highlight the correct cells. So that's from A1 down to A7. I can highlight them or I can type that in. Close my parentheses and tab out of there. So my mean or my average sample mean is 47,000. 950, and my sample standard deviation, ST. So I have two choices here. One is for population and one is for sample. Um, this is just a sample of the annual salaries, so we would use standard deviation dot sample. Again, highlight the range from A1 down to A7. Tab out of there. My sample standard deviation is 10,855. Oops. So, and then, you know, the sample size n equals seven, we can count those. So get those values out of Excel and just rewriting them here with uh, dollar signs and making them easier to look at. Um, I should check that our assumptions are satisfied. So. The assumptions that allow us to construct a confidence interval with a with a given uh, margin of error, so or given uh, confidence level. So we do have a simple random sample. We're just assuming that that's true, even though it doesn't say that. And it seems that the original population of salaries is approximately normal. It says that right here. So even though our n is small, seven. Um, because that original population is assumed to be normal, we can continue with this process and um, find the 90% confidence interval that we're looking for. Okay, the reason I need that is to, uh, it, it's, it's what is allowing us to utilize the central limit theorem, which is allowing us to find the area, the, the error, the margin of error. Even though we're using Excel to find that margin of error, it's based on the central limit theorem. So that has to still be in, in applicable. Okay, so one thing I forgot to type in here is what is alpha? So alpha, again, is the value one minus whatever the confidence level is. So in this case, our confidence level is 90%. So the alpha is 0.1 or 10%. And we're looking for the 90% confidence interval of the mean. And again, in this case, because we have raw data, you know, we don't have the population standard deviation we know the sample standard deviation. So we have the three different options of confidence intervals. Um, and in each case, we have to find the error. 
and then add and subtract it from the sample mean, 47,950. So for the error, again, we'll use Excel, confidence.t, um, sample standard deviation s, sample size n. So I plug those in, confidence.t, 10%, 10,855, 7. Do that over here. Confidence.t, 0.1. And it says here alpha and then standard deviation, 10, 8 by 5, and then 7. Tab out of there. Again, our, 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 our raw data was to the nearest, looks like the nearest $10. So I'm going to go to the nearest dollar here. Um, that would depend on what the problem says, but I'll go down to 79.72. It should be clear on the homework, and I'll try to make it real clear on my exams um, what value I want to round to. So our margin of error is $7,972. We want to take that value and add and subtract it from the sample mean, and that will give us our confidence interval. So the three different notations, take the sample mean, plus or minus the error, actually physically add or subtract it, giving us 39,978 to 55,922 as an interval, or as an inequality, putting the population mean mu between the two values on the lower end, $39,978, on the upper end, $55,922. Writing that out, interpreting it, it would be thought of, we are 90% confident that the mean annual salary of high school counselors in the United States is between $39,978 and $55,922. Um, you know, some people get confused here. They think that that means that all the salaries are between those values. Clearly that's not true because up here we have a $65,000 annual salary for someone up there. So this confidence interval is telling us about the average salary of all counselors. So we're 90% confident that that average salary of all counselors in the United States is between these two values. Um, okay, so there's a second method that is maybe a little quicker. Um, we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but um, Instead of individually finding the sample mean and the sample standard deviation, we're going to use the descriptive statistics in the data analysis tool pack to find all three of these things together. So we'll go over to Excel. And again, I've already typed the data in. We have to do that anyways to find using the first method. Ah. Sorry. Move that down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So remember, we have our data analysis tool pack. So to data, and I need to find my data analysis, which is over here. Okay. And in my data analysis, I want to go to descriptive statistics. Here they are. Say okay. Uh, let's clear this all out. Okay. So descriptive statistics. Look at what it's asking us for, the input range, that's these values. So I'll highlight from A1 to A7. Then it's good to tab out of there. These are in a column. We do not have any labels in the top row, so I'll leave that tick mark blank. The output range, where do I want the output? I want it right here, F1. And then here's the difference down here. We want the summary statistics and we want the confidence level of the mean. So we want both those things. Oops. And here it's going to ask me the confidence level for the, what level of confidence do we want? In this problem, we're looking for a 90% confidence interval. So I want to put 90 in there. And then say okay. I'll give you a minute to sort of look at that. You could, or you could pause the video. Um, if you need to go back and 
make sure you have all these things. But basically, if you walk through input range, where you want the output, click on output, and then summary statistics and the confidence level of the mean, hit OK. So in here, I'm going to expand these out. Just double click there. And let's go ahead and pull out the pieces that we need. So we need our count. That should be seven, and it is. Copy it and paste it in here. We want our mean. Copy it, paste it in there. We want our standard deviation. Copy it, paste it in there. And we want our confidence level. Copy it out of there, paste it in here. And then I'm going to expand both these columns and round these guys down uh, to no decimal places. OK. So out of our descriptive statistics, these are the pieces that we had before from that we found manually using Excel. So uh, let's see if I can keep that up here. Maybe right there. There we go. And if we look over here, n is 7, x bar is 47,950. The sample standard deviation, 10,855, and the confidence level, or the that's the error, 7,972, right over here. Um, and then a quick way, if you want to find your confidence interval, is just to go here and go equals the mean minus 7,972 over to the mean, click on equals the mean plus 7292, the confidence level. And we can see our confidence interval goes from 39,978 up to 55,922. So this is a kind of a quick way to accomplish what we've just done, but sort of in one step using descriptive statistics. Um, the main difference being that we tick that little box for confidence level, and then that bottom thing down here gets added on to our descriptive statistics, and it tells us what the margin of error is. Maybe I should recall that over here, margin of error at the 90% confidence level. And then the problem now is exactly the same as before, um, the x bar plus or minus the error in any of the three notations gives us the same values over here, and again, the final sentence that we are 90% confident mean annual salary of high school counselors is between these two values. Um, so how this problem was originally different than the other two problems was that we were given the sample data. And again, we sort of have two options there. One is to um, use Excel to find the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. And then that's like example two after that point. Or the other option is what we just did just find everything in Excel directly and uh, find the confidence interval from there. Okay, so now what's left is confidence intervals of the proportion. Um, we'll be posting some videos on those shortly, so take a look at those after you've gone over the confidence intervals of the mean. They're very similar ideas. Um, we just changed basically the margin of error formula changes.